Hey everyone. So this is part two of Microsoft Purview Masterclass. In the part one, we learned more about information prediction. There were a few additional things I wanted to cover. So in this, we will cover about insider risk management, device-based uh, data loss prevention policy creation. How do you create policies to prevent any sort of uh, data leakage for generating AI technologies, things like that. I hope you find this one useful. I will see you on the next one. Take care. First, let's go and sign into the Purview Lab by going into purview.microsoft.com. If you get this message, if you are using for the first time, there is a new update we are doing in terms of making the portal a brand new layout. So please take some time to actually navigate through it to understand uh, what other things are changing. On the left hand side, you can see that there is a easy access to solutions. If you click on solutions, you can see on a super high level, all the solutions what we offer within the purview portal. So let's click on audit just to make sure if the audit is turned on. If you see this message like start recording user admin activities, that means that your tenant is not turned on to receive or use for auditing purposes. So click on that. And that will enable your tenant to use for any sort of auditing and compliance purpose. So that's how you can enable auditing in Microsoft Purview. Next, let me show you how you can enable onboarding of devices in your Purview portal. On the left hand navigation sidebar, you can see there is an option called settings. Click on settings. Under settings, there are many options called account, roles and scope data connectors but underneath that you can find there is an option called device onboarding expand that option and click on devices and here you can see on the right hand canvas the no device is onboarded yet because we have not turned on the device onboarding so click on turn on device onboarding to turn device onboarding on so when you turn this on any devices that are already onboarded to the microsoft defender endpoint will appear in the device list so if it is not onboarded, then we can actually start the process in the onboarding page. So click OK. So you can see that the device monitoring is turned on. It may take like up to five minutes to become active. I did a quick refresh and uh, we got this page after a couple of minutes. That means that now we are ready to onboard new devices. In the next exercise, we are going to learn how you can onboard a device to endpoint data loss prevention so what we are going to do is we are going to go under device onboarding click on onboarding and uh, we are going to onboard a windows 11 device this this particular device what we are working at the moment so under onboarding you can choose a operating system i think it is starts with windows 10 there is an option for mac operating system as well that is quite good the under deployment method there are various methods you can onboard the devices either using group policy or SCCM or Intune or VDI onboarding script. We are gonna use the first option called local script. You can onboard up to 10 devices. Go and download the package. Click on download the package. And once the package is downloaded, click on open the folder and extract the folder, extract your device. Now within that, you can see there's a script. Uh, because it is protected, I'm gonna right click on that script, go to properties. And under security, you can see that this file came from another device. Uh, it might be blocked to help protect this computer. I'm going to say that unblock, click on apply and click OK. And let's go and run this. Oh, I basically want to run it as an administrator. So right click, run as an administrator. Yes to confirm it. Yes to confirm it and run it. All right, the it is starting the required service and successfully onboarded the devices to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. All right, so the device onboarding is complete. Now close this. So when you onboard a device with this, uh, you can be pretty sure that it is being protected by the Endpoint DLP policy. So that's how you onboard a device to protect with uh, data loss prevention. Next, let's go and learn about Data Security Posture Management or DSPM for AI. So for that, I'm gonna click on Solutions. If you scroll down, there is a new option called Data Security Posture Management Preview. Click on that. So here, what we are going to do is we are going to explore the DSPM for AI recommendation to find the best security policies for a particular company. And these recommendations focus on data protection, detecting risky behavior, and ensuring compliance with AI standards like NAIST AI Risk Management Framework. So within Data Security Posture Management, First, to um, enable analytics, 
uh, click on turn on analytics uh, read through that this is going to enable dlp insider risk management information protection and things like that i'm going to click on turn on dspm and then for data security posture management for ai um, even within that you can go under solutions um, there is a solution called dspm for ai click on that and within that click on recommendations this is the place where you can come and see what are the recommendation it is suggesting um, to protect your organizations on using the AI solution. So here you can see that the first option is fortify your data security. So click on this. So this particular policy or this particular recommendation talks about creating DLP policy using adaptive protection to block or warn users with elevated risk from pasting or uploading sensitive information into AI applications such as Edge, Chrome or Firefox. Uh, within this recommendation itself, you have create policies or dismiss this recommendation. I'm going to click on create policies and that is going to automatically apply the recommendation what we have gone through. So that particular policy has been created from protecting us from either warning the user or blocking the users with uploading sensitive information to AI application. So similarly, um, you can actually go through other recommendations available. It's quite simple, straightforward. You can see there is an option called protect your data with sensitivity label. Um, if you want to use this, go and configure that. And there are a few other recommendations which we have not started like insider risk management and things like that. We will come to that later. Next, uh, let's go and learn how we can create a DLP policy. DLP is nothing but data loss prevention. So I'm going to click on solutions. Um, here we can find data loss prevention. Click on that. Within that on the left hand side, you can find policies. Click on policies. There are some policies by default available within your tenant. But to create a policy, all you have to do is click on create a policy. Either you can start with a template or create a custom policy. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a custom policy. So under categories, um, if you don't want to use any of the predefined templates, click on custom and within that click on custom policy and click next. Give a name for the data loss prevention policy we are trying to create. So we are going to create a policy for generating AI sharing DLP policy and the description is to prevent sharing of sensitive data with generative AI platforms. Click next. Um, this is where you need to assign to an administrative unit. We are not adding any administrative units. Click on next. This is where you need to choose where to apply this policy. So by default, it is turned on for Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams, devices and things like that. I'm going to uncheck all of that. We can actually test all of that, but I just want to show you the devices here because that is what we onboarded. So just select devices and click next. We are not going to define any sort of policy settings. Click next. So under define policy settings, make sure you retain the create or customize advanced DLP rules and click next. Within here, customized advanced DLP rules, click on create rule. Let's close this flyout. Uh, we're going to give a name. So I'm going to give a sensitive data protection rule. And the description is detect and restrict sharing of sensitive information with generative AI applications. And scroll down till you find condition. Click on add a condition. And within that, select content contains. Under default, click on add sensitive information types. And on the sensitive information types, I'm going to select credit card and select add under actions if you scroll down click on add an action and i'm going to select audit and restrict activities on devices within that if you scroll down there are various options called service domain and upload to restricted cloud service domain or access to unallowed browsers click on choose different restriction for sensitive service domains click on add group and select the generative ai websites and click on add and within the sensitive service domain restriction um, under generative AI website um, there are many actions you can pick audit only block so I'm going to select block and click save and save the policy and here I'm going to select oops let's go and edit there is one more action we need to configure click on edit under sensitive domain and browser activities select the paste to supported browsers 
and click on choose different restriction for sensitive service domain and add group here we're going to select sensitive here we're going to select generate AI websites and under action we're going to select block and save and for both of these rules there are two options uh, there are many options audit only block or things like that I'm just going to retain audit only if you scroll down you can find other settings and policies as well let's go and find the user notification option by default the user notification is turned off I'm going to turn this on and under endpoint devices show users a policy tip notification when an activity is restricted so this is turned on when you select block for an activity in windows and click on save now to complete this process click on next i'm going to say that run this policy in a simulation mode you can turn on the policy immediately or leave the policy turned off and click next and submit so you have learned how to successfully create an endpoint DLP policies in a simulation mode. So how do you activate a policy in a simulation mode? So let's wait for this to complete. All right, so now that the policy is created, click done. Now if you go back to the policies and if you scroll down, you will be able to find the Gen AI sharing DLP policy we created just now. Let's select that. You can see all the configuration what we have done if you want to review it and the policy status is sync is in progress so if you want to turn on all you have to do is click on this ellipsis 